Hello, class. This is Marcos, and this is our weekly design briefing for our second to last week of class. And uh, I want to make sure everyone is in touch with what's going on and ready to wrap up your audiovisual book and also have your eye on the upcoming final reviews we're going to have. Uh, so let's just take a look at the calendar. Um, we uh, are starting week 15. Uh, we just finished, finished week 14 and uh, we had our individual meetings uh, with which most everyone shared their progress at and everyone's at various levels. But basically at this point, you should be in production for your um, audio visual book and that you should be uh, working on producing your MP4 that will be a self-playing uh, mock-up, I'll call it, of how your audiovisual book would work, uh, that when you hit play on the MP4, it goes automatically and has the sound work and the movements work and plays through your story in the way you would intend it to be on an app. Um, and to do that, everyone needs to kind of rely on your skills that you have or skills that you can learn over the coming week, um, whether it's using um, After Effects. If you're already first in that, you can definitely make your MP4 with motion and sound um, via After Effects. Or if you want to utilize the Figma template and the Figma process with the anime plugin that we um, have and that we've had students use last year and that we have a, a tutorial for. So that's up to you. Um, make sure you um, pick a process you're comfortable with that you can do a good job with. On the Figma side, you know, it would be, I know everyone kind of uses it at some level, but it seems like that's a pretty up and coming um, application and to be able to use that, it's good. So if, if you end up learning that, I think that would be a good thing to do. Um, so as you can see, we have two weeks left and that's um, exciting and, and sad. Um, but we have one more week of class in our classroom, which is next week, which we'll meet in our classroom, full class, and we'll have uh, a review of um, everyone's um, produced uh, audiovisual books with sound and motion. Uh, that That's the goal. Everyone should have something to play at, at, by next week and have, um, but have the chance for us to give feedback and pot potentially revise it or, or even complete it if it isn't fully finished, but you need to have a working model by next week. And then after that, we'll have final reviews and we'll be having the final reviews in my office in Dumbo. Um, and the idea is going to be that it will be a series of um, kind of one-on-one -on -one presentations with different um, guest reviewers. There'll be some guest reviewers in the office, uh, in the conference room, and um, you'll be presenting one-on-one uh, -on -one with them. And then there'll be um, a special computer with guest reviewers, um, a couple of them probably on Zoom that you could present via Zoom and via a digital presentation, both of them. For all your presentations, you'll need um, a final deck that consolidates your three projects, your baby board book, your process, your concept, your research, your concept process, your completed design, or your baby board book, or your storybook and for your audiovisual book. You'll also have your books in hand, uh, your two books. Um, the printing for the storybooks are being delivered. Most of them have arrived and a few more are coming in, but everyone will have their storybooks to present uh, as well as your baby board books when you're, so it'd be great that now we're not doing a full Zoom uh, presentation like we've done the past couple of three years. Now you can hand it over and show somebody a book while you're telling them about it. Um, and, um, and the audiovisual book, obviously we have to play that, um, and, uh, experience that through playing it. Um, so it'll be a, a it'll be a good review and it'll be a chance for all of us to get together and kind of like share with, with new people, your books, and it'll be a really good closure for you to see the results of what you've done in this class over the past semester, over just a course of a few months how you've all, each of you have authored and developed and printed and produced three different projects that are at the highest level, that are geared towards informing, inspiring, and bonding together families. It's a great thing you've done. And I want that to be the spirit of our reviews. It's not supposed to be some kind of hardcore 
uh, thesis defense or a uh, place where you're going to have to, um, you know, justify your decisions. It's going to be a time for you to show what you've done and celebrate with someone uh, the results of your work. So that's going to be very inspiring. Great. Um, okay. So why is that page next? I get, okay. So that page next is a, so that we're talking about um, producing this uh, audio visual book for next week. So basically uh, the result of what you're doing needs to be something like what I'm showing you here, where you play it. Dirt read and sets. Can I have a cookie? The narration goes, the motion Ashley happens Mary and it Ashley goes through, through the full okay. amount of, of time. Like we've talked about, the time can vary. Obviously, uh, this one's just over two minutes. That's probably an average two to three minutes. Um, the fear is it's short and you're having a hard time keeping the visuals up with the story. So um, I think everyone's pretty much got that figured out. Um, but, you know, time is an element in this design process. It's not, it's not just motion. It's also time and, and sound. So there's a lot going on that's new to you that I think will help with your skills and being more of a diverse designer. So when you're designing this, you're designing, the, uh, the you're directing the way the sound's gonna work, the way the motion's gonna work. All that has to do with important skill sets of being a visual communicator. And uh, I want everyone to push that to the highest, not just a matter of quickly doing something, like make this as good as possible with all the subtleties needed. Uh, one thing to know also as well is with, with, um, with the way you develop this, there will be this, um, this title page uh, that this interface that takes up not quite half but um a good portion of the bottom make sure you fill this out that you um have the title and that you put in your illustration or design uh or even uh authoring written by and your name and then the narration if it's yourself repeat your name or if it's yourself and somebody else like it is here put their name and of course say that Another thing to remember too is that there is this portion of the text here that is about um, giving people uh, an overview of what uh, the story is about. So you need to write something there and put in a little um, overview of what your um, a preview of a of what your story is about, or what the lesson is, uh, or where the story came from, or what you did with it. And you can also um, choose to um, can I have a to make that part of your narration. So let's listen to this part, how um, this designer put in the text here, but not only, and, and chose to read it. You know, you don't have to read it. It can just go from the name of the book, a sub, a subtitle if you want, um, and then the credits. And then from there, I would recommend having this, this close within your motion, the, the interface so you see the full image and before it turns to the next. But in this case here that we're going to play, you'll hear how um, she chose to read the um, the intro or the overview. The Grateful Crane, Japanese folktale, illustrated by Kiko Gui, narrated by Alex Wen. The Crane, the Grateful Crane, Oops, Japanese folktale, illustrated by Kiko Gui, narrated by Alex Wen. The crane, an elegant and beautiful bird, is considered to be auspicious in Japan. In this story, a poor farmer receives good fortune after rescuing a wounded crane. But unfortunately, his curiosity gets the better of him, and his luck does not hold out. The great crane is a short, rather sad, but beautiful Japanese folktale that talks about gratefulness, integrity, and mysteriousness. A long time ago, an old man and women lived a poor life. Okay, so you saw there how it went through um, and read out loud all this. And then when it was done with it, the interface dropped down, revealing the entire image, the first image. And it also, you could have seen there that the image was slowly moving across. So there was a little bit of motion going up, but not too distracting. Um, and then another thing to keep in mind is to, and not all these examples have it, but is to end it in the same way so that you have, um, you repeat the credits. And I'm not even sure this one does. Flew like an arrow toward the horizon. All right, so that one doesn't do it. So here at this point, what I want is a repeat of the title 
and the credits so that it has an ending that is um, clear and it also gives a chance to um, repeat what the, what the book was and who are the people involved in it. Let's see if this one does it. Can I have a cut? Oh, here. Narrated by Ashley yeah, Kim. So you can hear it. So at the end, the book ends. And at the end, she deserved the cookie. Can I have a cookie? Illustrated by Ashley Kim. Narrated by Ashley Kim and Annie Park. All right. So that's an example of it. I want you to start with the title and the credits and tagline and end in the same way. Um, and then Dirt. let's see, what else can I show you here? Okay. Here's another example of, of um, reading out loud the title um, and then having this interface move down before um, you begin to the next page. We like to move. Written and illustrated by Malavika Srinivasan. Narrated by Kirtana Srinivasan. Thank you. So in this case, it, it faded away, so it doesn't have to drop down, just as long as it goes away. Um, and you could see that in this example that it went away before they were done reading it. So that that's another way of doing it too. So if you want, particularly if you have something in your image that you want to be seen that's near the bottom and you don't want it cropped up the whole time, you can have that go away a little quicker. Um, so yeah, so that those are the things in the beginning and the end, like have a, a good start to finish. And you could hear on, on this one as well that there's music in the background. So consider that, consider that music playing in the background at not too high of a volume is important, but it does kind of set a tone and it. The music can also help uh, in the times when there's, when there's pauses and there is no talking, particularly if you have a shorter story that you need to have more pauses so that you space it out and you have enough time to look at the imagery moving. The music will keep that, uh, connect those spaces between the voice so that it's not this awkward silence and keep the tone and the vibe of the story going consistently. But again, make sure it's not too loud and make sure it's a royalty free uh, sound. It's not um, like some uh, pop song or something that was not gonna be allowed. Um, great, so then work on that this week um and utilize each other like if you guys like i'm pretty useless on this right now in terms of like technology i don't know how to do this stuff i just know how to boss people around and get them to do it for me so i'm going to boss you around and have you work with each other and uh you know check with your fellow classmates or other other friends you have at school who know how to use these programs uh utilize them for the narration we've got some people doing ai for the sound and as much as AI freaks me out and is pretty much gonna be the end of our civilization, for now, I guess we can embrace it before it kills us. So yeah, go ahead and use it for sound if you want. There's been some pretty cool results, I have to admit, but there isn't nothing better than a person with a soul talking to you. So if you want to get find somebody um, real, that that's the op optimal, but using AI is also something that can work as well. Um, so. We have um, Canvas, I posted uh, the part three, I'm calling it production here. And there's the same links that we've had before, a link to the, um, to the uh, here we go, the link to the Google Drive. And please, you need to be putting these things in the Google Drive. I'm gonna go through and do grades right now after this. And many of you in the past have not been putting things in the Google Drive, so you're gonna, grades will be lower than it could have been. So just know that when you see why is, why is my grade a little lower than I thought, because you're not posting your stuff in the Google Drive, but there's always redemption at hand. So if you forget and you want to put them in there and then let me know, then I can revise the grades if you do that before the end of class, end of the class semester. Um, but so post here in, um, for our Thursday review. And then also remember there are resources. There's the class resources uh, link here. And in that ha we have... Um, the Dirt Audiovisual Books past projects, which are the um, different examples of past projects you can play through. And that's still something you should be looking at and, and uh, learning from. And then there's the uh, Dirt Audiovisual Book mock-up tutorials. And in there, there's uh, an MP4 
there's uh, instructions in just a Word document. And um, here's the template as well that you can utilize, which I've shared with everybody. And the idea here is that you replace the text, you replace the images, and you use this um, open anime plugin. And then if you watch this video here, this video uh, has a quick explanation of how to use it and should be what you need to get through it. There's also a PDF about placing images in Figma that's available. Um, and here are the um, audiovisual uh, archive from past projects. Okay, and then the one last thing is we have, um, everyone should have received an email with the class evaluation surveys. And my goal is to get 100% participation with everybody to respond and fill out the survey. Um, this is your chance to give feedback and to um, assess how things went in the class and um, take the time. It, I would appreciate it for me. It's good to get this, this kind of review. I love getting, I love reading the, the comments. Um, and, and I'm not just fishing for compliments. Like, of course, tell me all the great things you've learned in this class or how it's helped you. But if there are suggestions you have or things that you think could be done better, for sure, let me know. Um, and, um, or let the powers that be whoever reads these things know, but for sure, take the time, click that link and uh, do the evaluations. Uh, you can do it now, but I kind of don't mind if you wait till after the last class, because then you'll be like really understanding the what the whole class was about. Um, so even if you do it after finals, I just would like everyone to participate. So make sure you do that. It means a lot and I would appreciate it. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, Again, I'm here as always for feedback. So share with me what you're doing. The key here is you gotta be utilizing me. If you, some of you have been doing really good at that, we've been interacting back and forth and the results of course have been better because of that. <laughs> but some of you are a little more, uh, you know, on silent mode and don't be shy. Like I'm not gonna, I'm gonna give you good ideas. I'm not gonna like make you do things you don't wanna do. But um, I, I, my goal is to make the best possible project and. I want you guys to be as proud as possible with the results. So let's interact as much as possible. But in the meantime, I will see you guys on Thursday. Thanks to everyone and look forward to our next class. Take care.